Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here. Welcome back to the Carolina Hurricanes Be A Jam and the final episode of our series here with them. Um, first off, I'd like to say thanks to everybody who took part in this series. Really, there are a ton of great suggestions that helped me get through of it, through it, and I know that I'm going to take a lot more of those, you know, take those suggestions and apply it a lot further with the Toronto Maple Leafs in our next Be A Jam series. Uh, the purpose of this episode is just go over exactly how we did over the course of our five seasons with the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, you know, kind of sum it all up. And I want you guys to give me a rating out of 10 uh, how you think I did. Uh, I touched base on it previously. You know, are we judging it based on the number of Stanley Cups? Are we judging it based on the number of President's Trophies we won? Are you judging it based on the player statistics and growth? It's up to you guys how you judge it. So... Put a rating out of 10, give me a reason why you gave him that rating, and don't be afraid to be critical because people don't, you don't learn from, you know, making mistakes, or sorry, you don't learn from being perfect. You make, you learn from making mistakes and having people say, hey, you know what, you could have done this better too. That way I can be better with the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? I mean, that's what this is all about. We're working together to make a good team, and I thought we did really well with Carolina. Uh, and you guys are truly the best subscribers on YouTube, absolutely. You know what? There's not much fighting. I like that. There's not much fighting. There's a little good, a little bit of arguments every now and then, but for the most part, you guys really do provide some really positive, uh, positive inputs and really good, really good suggestions. Fantastic suggestions. And uh, as a YouTuber, anyway, I like to out reach out to you guys and say, you know what? This, these guys have good suggestions, and you do. You really do, because there's a lot, a lot of portions of this game that I don't know. But uh, you know, I, so I'm willing to take it all into account and also share some of my knowledge. So I thank you guys for all that. Okay, uh, roster analysis grade. We got four and a half stars in all three categories. I don't really know how much we can go through here. This is just organizational, organizational makeup. We don't really need that. Uh, GM tasks we don't need to go through, I don't think. No. GM reputations. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so Calgary we had a great reputation with. That's the only team we had a great reputation with. Uh, 16 neutral teams, two poor teams, and look at all the rival teams. Wow, we piss people off, and the reason why you piss people off is because you try to make trade. Pardon me, sorry. You try to make trades, and they just don't go through. So you know, Winnipeg and San Jose. I mean, Chicago at a D, um, D minus. That's because the Tays trade. Colorado probably Landeskog. Uh, Tampa Bay. We tried to make a trade go through for Stamkos. Like we tried a lot of trades to go through here, so that's why they don't like us. Uh, team rankings. We are number one, obviously. That hasn't changed at all from the looks of things. Career rank, we're number two, even though we only won one Stanley Cup. So, that's okay. I'm happy with that. I think last time we were number one, if I'm not mistaken. But, that's pretty good nonetheless. Uh, who finished in last over the five years? The Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> that's really not good at all. Uh, most Stanley Cups earned four different Stanley Cup winners. Well, five. We're supposed to be up. Oh, you know what? You know what? Let's sim up to where it ends. I don't know where it's going to end exactly. Uh, thank you. It's now time to part ways. I want to sincerely thank you for your long and distinguished tenure as GM. In case you're wondering, you're first overall in the NHL power rankings. Uh, we will be taking a look at that again here. Uh, let's go GM tracker. Uh, where were we? Team rankings. There you go. So Carolina, yeah, number one. So um, there you go. There's our franchise. So GM power rankings, we were number one. It didn't take into account the Stanley Cup. So that was second because of the fact we hadn't won a Stanley Cup. So that really vaulted us into first, according to this. So that's really good. Uh, won a cup. Five different teams won the Stanley Cup in the course of our GM. That's insane. Nobody won twice. Uh, usually one team wins twice. Quite surprised. Uh, the toughest team grade. This is one that I wanted to be in. But look at this. We're probably last. Yeah, we are dead last. We're an E for toughness. But that's a tie with almost every team. The toughest team in the league are the Philadelphia Flyers. There's a, there's no surprise there. Um, I'd like to get my toughness up, I think, in terms of, you know, big bruising guys. And I'm hoping that with this extended B a GM, we might come along, come across a couple three and a half star uh, tough guys. Because those ones are the ones that are hard to play against. And uh, I don't know. We'll have to see if that makes a difference. I find I've had a couple three and a half stars, so they're still out there. Uh, personal GM records. Let's see, total tasks unlocked 131. No one really wants to see this, do you? Staff with most upgrades were fourth. 
Okay. Best statistics. Total goalie shutouts in your career were 60. So over the course of that, we were 60. Shutouts this season, 18. Most wins in a single season, 63. Longest ever winning streak, 11. Trading and reputation. Total trades made, 24. Total offers rejected by the computer, almost 100. Most trades made in a single year, 14. Proposals that boosted your team rep, 17. Proposals that lowered it, 104. Highest GM reputation has achieved is 100, and that's the max you can get anyway. Maximum phones active, 105. Uh, we only got to veteran status, right? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't get to uh, legendary or star, but that, you know, you need longer time to get to it, so... Uh, best signed free agent overall rating, 84. That was David Perron. See, that's pretty good. I like that, that we didn't sign high-end players. We didn't rely on that. We relied on our uh, our drafting and our developing of our prospects. We traded a lot, but we never signed anybody. I thought we did really well with that. Uh, free agent signed a total of 32 of them. Contracts renewed 26. Most renewals offered in on offseason, just, just six. That's not too bad. And two players claimed off of waivers. Total trophy, trophies earned are 12. Qualified for the playoffs all five years, guys. All five years. That's unbelievable. That's really, really good. We built this team to flip around really quickly, and it worked really well. We've asked for the quarterfinals five times. The semifinals, four out of the five seasons that we played be a GM, we advanced to the semifinals. And uh, we advanced to Stanley Cup finals just once, just once, but we won it. Playoff round swept a total of two in all those years. That's not great, but it's not bad either, guys. That's really good. Uh, really steady production. We finally got the Vancouver bug off our back. GM power rankings, weeks this year in the top 10, 38. Years finished in the top 10, all five. You got that right. All right, statistics. Here are our numbers. Uh, the first year we played, we finished 42, 34, and 6 for a total of 90 points. Uh, does it, how far back does it go? That's it. And we ended up finishing second, in the, sorry, in the second round of the stats. So that's the only one we didn't get to the final semifinals in. All right, that first year where we kind of surprised everybody jumping in there. All right, then we saw a little bit of increase in our, our wins. We got 44 wins at 28 losses and 10 overtime losses. Those overtime losses definitely boosted our point total to 98. And we ended up going to the semifinals that year. I do not recall who we played, and I can't tell. Um, our third year... We went 52, 24, and 6 for 110 points. And again, went to the semifinals. Uh, our fourth year, 63, 14, and 5. Our best year by far, 131 points, 287 goals for. And we again went to the semifinals. That one was the disappointing season where we should have gone all the way, but we ended up getting... Uh, we were up 3-0 on the Tampa Bay Lightning in the semifinals, and they ended up beating us 4-3 to in the series. Like, absolutely ridiculous. Um, the final season, fifth year, 51, 23, and 8 for, again, 110 points. We had a few fewer goals than the year before, obviously. Uh, but that was the best year for goals against, guys. So if that's any indicator of when you win a cup, 176 apparently is the magic number. We won that cup. Uh, let's see, team stats. That's for this season, 51 wins. We don't need that. Team stats, playoffs, we don't need that. Okay. GM contract history, total years in career so far, five, total number of, so we only got offered two unique contracts, five successful years, number of separate teams managed, one, we don't need any of that. Uh, we accomplished all our goals, didn't we? Yep. Yep, on both our deals, we contra accomplished both our goals. Uh, staff abilities, they are done, they're maxed out. Uh, we'll just do this. Ah, there you go. <laughs> that might actually boost something there. Um, let's take a look at, before we get out of here, oops, uh, let's go to GM options. Can I, yeah, I can look at contracts. Um, how do you look at player growth? I'm wondering if we can look at that. Hold on. It's probably under coaching options, to be honest. Player growth. Team reports, maybe. Um, no. No, okay, that's not it. Um... No, maybe it is under GM then. Hold on. GM options. So contracts, no. Free agency, no. Offer sheets, no. Compensation, no. Roster moves, scouting. Transaction news, injury report, maybe. No. No. I thought you used to be able to monitor players' growth. Player growth. I thought there was a way to do that. Um, 
I guess not. I always thought that there used to be something like that. It's not a strategy, is it? No, that's just that. Is it under practice? Um, no. Interesting. Well, I thought there was something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, I guess, player stats then. Let's go to view lines. We'll take a look at who's in our roster. We're not really going to go through anything too much. Oops, I got to go edit lines. Shit. Stupid. I don't know why view lines in there. So I guess you can view other teams. So Jonathan Druin. Let's take a look at Jonathan Druin. Now he's 22 years old. He's still got a long way to go. He's going to be a really great player to come. Uh, 68 points in his second season after an 83 perform point performance in his rookie season with 46 goals. We thought he was going to get over 50 this year. He didn't. We had a bit of a disappointment this year, uh, but that's not too bad. The playoffs, he put up 18 points in 22 games. That's solid. That's an increase. So he, he really came to play when he needed to. Uh, Jonathan Taze, 66 points. Uh, the year before, he had 93, 64, and 79. So we definitely did. we picked him up here, I believe, right? So we had him for the last three seasons. So that's not too bad at all. It only shows the last four, which is kind of dumb. I don't know why it doesn't show them all. Now Yakupov. Okay, so he had 53 points, 64, 84, and then 55. A huge drop for Yakupov. So it wouldn't be a good off season for him anyway. But that 84 points, he was definitely trending upwards to be an elite star in the NHL. And he still will be. Uh, Sven Barchi, another sniper for us. Great shooting categories. Absolutely elite status. Um, he really... Oh, that's playoff stats. Uh, we look at that 50 to 83 to 84. We started to see some consist consistency from him, but this final year has just really been bad for everybody. 66 points for him, but 25 goals is not bad. Uh, Jordan Stahl, who is Mr. Consistent for us, really. He was always in the 60 range, you know, except for this last year. He was our leading scorer in our first two seasons, if you guys can recall that. And he did really well for us. I really enjoyed Jordan Stahl. Great two way forward, great goal scorer. Just did everything for us. Gabriel Landeskog, uh, 86 overall power forward. Um, he, again, had a great year in his first year with us. I believe that was his first year, wasn't it? Yeah. And then, again, he started to... He went down, up, down. So, I think Landeskog was poised for another good year, the, like, next year. Unfortunately, he didn't finish there. And he's a good power forward. I wish it would monitor hits. I don't know that it does, which is kind of stupid, because I'd like to know what his hits were. Because his body checking is 88, which is really good. Uh, David Perron, we're not going to look at him too much. We'll see what he did for us this year. 37 points. So, again, we put him on the third line, and that's what happens. Uh, Jarrett Stoll, you know what? He, he's consistent. 21, 19, 23, 31, a little bit higher. But that's pretty good for a third-line center. Um, I'd take that any day from a third-line center with, like, 90 face-offs, right? 90 face-offs. Absolutely elite. He's a player that I almost pick up every year because of that. Almost every year. Uh, Timo Hardikainen, our, one of our only grinders on the team. 81 overall, though. A really good grinder. 90 body checking. Um, 24 points this year. It was his best year by far. He got into double digits in both categories. He was a well-balanced grinder. Fantastic to have him on a team on the team for some depth scoring. Also some depth, depth body checking. Uh, Austin Watson, our young rookie. 20, he's 25 years old. He was a four-star player. He never really got up there. We, we, we anticipated Austin Watson being more of a... A, you know, a, a second-line centerman to play along, or a second-line winger to play alongside of uh, Jordan Stahl. Remember, we picked him up for that, and he just never materialized for Austin, which is too bad because he's a really good player, and uh, you know, 89 body checking already at 20. He's 25, but you know, is this what is? Oh, I guess it was his third NHL season. I guess you know what we probably stunted his growth by jumping him in too soon. I think I failed there. We should have probably kept him back a little bit longer. And I know a few people said, "Don't put Austin Watson in yet," just because. I agree, but I think for totally different reasons. Uh, Jay McClement, we're going to have him in Toronto. Jay McClement's great face-offs. I probably will not let him go ever. Uh, I love Jay McClement. He's your ultimate fourth-line grinder, really. 78 overall center. Great face-offs. Decent body checking. His discipline's great, and he's all around a well-balanced grinder. I love him. Uh, Magnus Piarvi, who kind of fell out of favor with us in the last season. Uh, he did okay. I mean, only 20-some points which is not good enough for a player who we project to be on the, you know, the second line. But, you know what, P we'll remember that in the future. PRV is not really a player you want to pick up as a two-way forward uh, that's going to make any kind of an impact. So, it is what it is. Some players develop, some players don't. And you know what, that might, that's not necessarily an indicator of what he'll do next year or with, in a different simulation, you know. Oliver ekman Larson, Not bad, but not great. He hasn't gotten there yet. I just need a sip of water. Hold on. 
this next year is a big growth year for him. <clears throat> he could get to 90 overall, but we're not obviously not going to be playing it, so it's lost cause. Oh, his points. Forgot to look at his points. Uh, 27 points this year was truly his lowest, but again, 42 points from him. That's what more could you ask for? Oops. <clears throat> Jumping all over the place. Mark Stahl. I picked these guys up to be a one-two punch, and Mark Stahl really dropped the ball for me. I felt that the Stahls in general, like Mark Stahl, Eric Stahl, those two were definitely big letdowns. Uh, the only one that truly was not a letdown was uh, Jordan, but you live and learn, right? You live and learn with these players. You never know exactly how good they're going to get. Michael Del Zotto, four-star Del Zotto. Del, Z Del Zotto or Del Zotto? I can never remember that. Del Zotto. Del Zotto. That's right. People keep criticizing me for that one. I keep fucking it up. Um, where are we here? 32 points. He actually put up one of his best seasons besides the 38.1. But he's an offensive defenseman. I expect Del Zotto uh, to be getting about 40 points, you know, at least. So he did that in that first year, but he just couldn't do it again. He had a lot of goals this year, though. 15 goals. He might have actually led all defensemen in goal scoring. Uh, Sanguinetti. 31 points, 8 goals, a two-way defenseman who we have. Uh, you know, and he just really was a three-and-a-half star player who played his way into the system. Remember, we got him, and he was... So when we started, I think he was 79 overall. Sorry, 78, maybe even 77. And he finished in an 84 in five years. So that's really good for a three-and-a-half star player. Carl Gunnarsson, my goodness, what happened to you, Carl? Nine points in your final season. Absolutely abysmal. Could not get much worse than that. You're a defensive defenseman, yes. But at the same time, you put up 26... 16 is even not bad, and 37 points just really did not do well for us in the end. And uh, Aaron Ness, an offensive defenseman who we picked up at the deadline there, and he did help us quite a bit. I think Aaron Ness was a, a big contributor. Um, and I'm going to give the, the elite star for us, the number one star every year was Carey Price. There's no doubt about it. Uh, 935 was his save percentage this year, guys. 935. He was unbelievable. I couldn't... Like, 13 shutouts this year. Carey Price was the reason why we won every year. And I would pick Carey Price up again in a heartbeat if I can make it happen. We'll look at Cousineau, even though he didn't play much. Yeah, not much to report on Cousineau. He didn't play much. So, that is what it is. Um, guys, that's it. Let's sim up here to where it stops us. I don't know where it's going to stop us. Can we draft? Let's draft again. Let's see what happens. It's going to end us right away here. Look at that cap space. 620,000. <laughs> Come on. Carolina Hurricanes, Manchester Monarchs. Yes. Now knowing what I do know for next year, I'm going to do a lot better. There we go. Congratulations. Your five-year career in BGM mode is now over. Uh, well done. Thank you. You ended your career with veterans GM status, which you accomplished in your third year. You completed 134 GM tasks over the course of your career, something you can be proud of, but still strive to, beat it in, strive to beat it in the future. You completed this career in hard skill level. Well done. Try picking other teams at the start of your career or try to beat your existing record, records for a task earned. Thanks for playing. Guys, that's it. That's the end of our BGM. We cannot do anything more. They won't let us sim up to here. I can't I can't even do anything. Ah, oh, it's so frustrating. Oh. But that's it. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for taking part in this BGM. Again, like I said, I couldn't have done it without you guys. You guys have really blended. You've been a great resource to me. You've lended a lot of your information that you you know uh, to me. And not just me. I'm sure it's helped out a lot of other people here on YouTube. So on behalf of them and on behalf of myself, thank you for your input. I hope you guys join me for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're going to try and have a lot of fun with that one. Uh, we're obviously it's gonna make, we're going to make it our last one for NHL 13. But uh, NHL 14 is just around the corner, guys. It's really, really close. We're looking at September 10th. They just announced the cover art. Er, Martin Brodeur is, you know, winning the cover uh, just the other day. So, you know, it's really picking up. Expect to see more information on that in the coming weeks. Uh, in a month or so, we'll probably see some live game footage from EA. So look forward to that. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. I'm Target Audience, and we will see you for the Toronto Maple Leafs BGM. You guys have a good one.